Oscillation. This is the topic now that we're going to look at in this section of videos. Part three, it's map, it maps to, if you're following along in the Nature of Code book, chapter three, we're going to look at oscillating motion. What does it mean to have something that moves with a period, with a frequency, uh, a swinging of a pendulum, the, the bouncing of a spring, the plucking of a guitar string, the, the waves of water? What types of things can we model in nature with oscillating motion? And we can see a nice example of this, this array of pendulums. This is something about that by the end of this section of videos, you could model in processing. We're actually going to look specifically at how to model a pendulum, and then you could make an array of them all starting at different times, and this might be an exercise you could think about doing at the end of this section of videos. But, um, so before we can do any of that, <laughs> you know, okay, so oscillating motion, waves, pendulum springs, that's what we're talking about. But to be able to really do this stuff, um, and, and actually to, a really important topic that we need to have in our bag of tricks when doing um, computer graphics programming is we need to know something about trigonometry. What is trigonometry? Well. This is a right triangle. A right triangle has sides, right? Side, side, side. It has angles. The relation, the study of the relationship between the angles and sides of a right triangle, that's trigonometry. And we need trigonometry to do lots of stuff on the screen. We need to know about sine, cosine, tangent, and it's also going to allow us to do some nice, um, some, some stuff related to oscillating motion, figuring out angular motion, angular forces, um, in terms of looking at a pendulum. So trigonometry, we need, to, we need somewhere to talk about trigonometry. This is the place. This is the time. Before we can even talk about trigonometry, which will really be in the next video, though, I just want to think about the basics of angles in processing. How do we rotate something based on an angle? And how might we model angular motion? Could angle be a position? Could there be an angular velocity and an angular acceleration? That's what I want to look at just in this first video to get us kind of started here. So you're probably familiar with angles, <laughs> right? Here is a 90 degree angle. Here is a, a 45 degree angle. It, you know, I, I, I'm guessing if you've found your way into these videos, you've probably done some stuff in processing and realized that processing in most computer graphics environments Look at angles in radians, right? 90 degrees is pi divided by 2 radians. 45 degrees would be pi divided by 4. A full 360 degrees is 2 pi. So I, you know, I want to just take a brief 30 seconds here and cover what is a radian. It's kind of like, it, uh, it might be a little mysterious to you. Well, the thing about a radian, actually, is it's quite simple. If you have a circle with radius equal to 1, one radian and I'm not sure if I'm drawing this to scale, one radian is the angle at which the length of this arc is also equal to 1. Incidentally, with a circle of radius 1, the, in, the length of the entire contour, the circumference of that circle, is 2 pi. So pi is this magical number that just kind of appears beautifully out of the uh, circumference of a, of a circle. And we get an, an and radians are this very convenient, convenient unit of measurement for angles. It's not, perhaps not as intuitive to us because we're used to thinking in degrees, but the more you program, the more your brain will reverse itself to thinking about radians. OK, so that's what we've got, angles and radians. Hey, that's pretty good. So we should be able to rotate something, right? If I, if this is a rectangle, if I want to rotate this rectangle by 45 degrees or pi divided by 4 radians, I should be able to get this rectangle. Now, this is not a lesson in 2D transformations. To do this rotation, you're going to need translate. You might need push matrix and pop matrix to figure out a lot of this stuff. We're going to incorporate that into our code. Let me briefly say that if 2D transformations are not familiar to you, what you probably should look at is um, processing.org learning Scroll down. I would suggest looking at this particular tutorial. I'm standing in front of it. Uh, 2D transformations. So this will get you. It, it, go, go, pause. Go look at this tutorial if transformations are not familiar to you. Um, but uh, so what we need to do to make this happen is translate to the object's location, rotate by that angle, and then draw the object. OK, so let's actually make that happen in a processing sketch. And we're, um, we're going to talk this. I think it's going to be a short video. I'm excited. We're going to talk just about um, looking at angular motion, velocity, and acceleration. OK, so 
Let's come back over here. Let's open up this processing sketch. So I have this pre-made processing sketch, which just draws a rectangle in the center. Right? So this is the thing we're talking about with transformations. You might think, oh, I know. I'm just going to type in rotate here and say pi divided by 4, and now run it again. And what's going on here? It's like down in the bottom. It's not in the center. It is sort of rotated. So what happened is rotation always happens around the point of origin. So we rotated that certain square around, I can't do it, <laughs> around the origin up there. We want to rotate that square around its center. To move the origin to the center, we need to use translate. So I'm going to say, hey, translate to width divided by 2, height divided by 2, and then, uh, and then rotate by that angle and draw the rectangle at 0, 0. And now we see we have a rectangle rotated 45 degrees. Exciting. OK, remember, we made, there's probably about 10, 15 videos about motion, position, velocity, acceleration. Velocity is the change in position over time. Acceleration is the change in velocity over time. Well, an angle is in many ways a position. It's the angular position of that square. Now, interestingly, this is actually simpler to deal with because an angle is a scalar quantity. It's a single number. It's not a vector. But we can apply, we can have one variable to be the angle, another variable to be the angular velocity, and another variable to be the angular acceleration. So let's take a look at that. What if I, at the top here, say A is some angle, the angular uh, velocity is some amount, and the angular acceleration is some amount. Now, what are the rules of motion? Velocity changes position. Acceleration changes velocity. This is exactly what we did in our update function in our movers. Location, add velocity, velocity, add acceleration. But we're just doing it here with angulars. Ang um, with, with, we're just doing it here with angulars with angles. Let's run this sketch. Nothing happens. But of course, if we actually put in, we say, hey, let's give ourselves a little acceleration. We can see, OK, come on. That's a very small acceleration. right? Is it turning? What's going on here? lost my mind. Ah, you know what would be nice? It would be nice to put the variable in here. <laughs> okay, so that was a little bit of a mistake. Uh, you know, I had pi over 4 in there still, but now we've got a back in there. We can say, okay, so that was not such a tiny little acceleration. You can see how quickly acceleration adds up in terms of rotating by radians, but you can see here we go. We're getting faster and faster and faster. We could use constraint to put a cap on velocity. Lots of things we could do. We could also just really quickly right now, just to um, kind of polish off this example, I could say, hey, let me actually calculate the acceleration on the fly by mapping mouse x, which goes between 0 and width, to a number between negative 0 0.01 and 0 0.01. Uh, let me add some extra zeros in here to make it smaller. Let me run this. And we can see here now, if I stay in the center, <laughs> no acceleration. If I go this way, we're going to start going that way. If I come over here, it's going to slow down, stop, and come back. So you can see how I'm modeling the motion, the rotational, the angular motion of an object the same way we modeled linear motion throughout Cartesian space. Angle is position, angular velocity is velocity, angular acceleration is acceleration. So you might sort of wonder, how would we then apply this to, um, to one of our uh, previous examples? And uh, I think it's worth just pulling one up. If I grab uh, this example, if you recall, which is um, which was our array of, of, of movers that are attracted to a singular attractor in the center. What if you wanted to give these objects a little bit of angular motion? Well, if we go look at the class, we can see we have location, velocity, and acceleration. Each object has those three variables to keep track of its motion throughout this Cartesian space. So what if I just went back to this example we did and grabbed these three variables? Let's give this object now, in addition to having uh, the vectors for, for its motion throughout space, we have three, angle, three, three scalars for its angular motion. And I could go and I could just, I could go to its display function and I could add the transformation code we need to, 
so that we can rotate the object. And we're going to now, once we've translated to where the object is, we've got to draw it at zero. And notice the use of push matrix and pop matrix in this object. This object is going to perform a transformation so that it is at a location and, rot and rotated. We want it not to affect any of the other objects. It just needs to translate and rotate for itself. So we say push to save this transformation state, do all our weird translation rotation, say pop to restore. So that this object is kind of has its own transformation state. OK, now that we've done that, so much for a short video, we're at 10 minutes. Now that we've done that, we can uh, run this and see what it looks like. OK, so one thing is circles. And not so much, you don't really see the rotation so much. So let's, um, let's, let's change these to uh, rectangles. Uh, and let's say rec mode uh, center. Let's run this. We can see we've got rectangles there. Of course, we didn't, add, we didn't add the angular motion to our sketch. We need to go and say, what's that motion algorithm for angles? It's this. So now in our update function, just in the way that we add acceleration velocity, velocity to location, we need to do that with, with our angles. Velocity to the angle, angular acceleration to the angular velocity. We're now doing that both with the object's angle and with its, um, and with its uh, uh, position. So if we run this now, we can see ah, they're all spinning. Now, here's the question, though. How should they spin? And there's lots of ways and simulation ways we can kind of get it, we could get further into this. But I, what I want to just say here for the second, is, for the, a moment is, what if we just did something simple and just said, uh, let's calculate its angular acceleration according to its acceleration along the x-axis. And I'm going to divide it by 10. So you can see here, we get something that appears somewhat dynamic, that the, that the angular, the way that it's rotating is uh, related to how it accelerates horizontally. Now, that is a completely arbitrary choice, but you might try, and as an exercise, you might try to build this in such a way that can you get it to appear realistically, like as if it's sort of spinning throughout space, and as it slows down, it spins back the other way. What happens if you use y? What happens if you use the magnitude of the vector, the angle of the vector? There's lots of things that you could map to that object's acceleration. Um, you could also think about forces. If there was a wind force, would that wind force the um, uh, affect its rotation in, in some such a way. I don't know that there'd be wind in this example, but you can sort of see where this is going. So this, um, this video, all we really did, all I want from this video, <laughs> hopefully it worked, was to kind of get a sense of, right, what is an angle? Angles can be used in an object's rotation and angular motion, the same way we modeled motion in throughout space, two-dimensional space, we can, that same concepts we can, we can use through, um, with an angle, with angle as position, angular velocity, and angular acceleration. OK, and in the next video, what we're going to look at <laughs> is actually start to understand, uh, start to look at the details behind trigonometry. What does it mean then to take the sine of an angle, the cosine of an angle, the tangent of an angle, and how might that affect some of these systems that we build? OK, uh, there we go. That's it for now.